He's a hustler, unbreakable, a people's person, and a future billionaire. This is the Hustler's Corner with Smoothie Soliope, well known to you and I as DJ Smooth. Hello everybody, welcome to the Hustler's Corner. Big homie Smooda here, straight out of Johannesburg in South Africa. Thank you so much guys for tuning in, appreciate it. The first thing I'll say... Let's go straight to that shop shop sign on the count of three. Please click that um, button. One, two, three. Let's go. Click, 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 click. Thank you so much. Lastly, let's go to that subscribe button. Click. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate it. I'm excited today because I am with um, one of South Africa's entrepreneur extraordinaire. Let me say Africa's entrepreneur extraordinaire. He's done really well for himself. He is currently building a brand. I don't even want to say he's built it but is in the process of doing so. Just like a lot of us African entrepreneurs are doing the same thing. We're all building our brands. We are on that journey. Ladies and gents, this gentleman that I have next to me is the founder of a brand called Batu. Batu is a proudly South African sneaker brand that many resonate with. Having lived most of, it, most of his youth life in Alex with his uncle, his name is Theo. He had a constant desire to realize his vision of creating a truly authentic South African sneaker brand. He's a qualified accountant. He has worked at PwC South Africa as well as in the Middle East before becoming a full-time entrepreneur and founder of Bar in 2015. He reignites hope to many families and individuals by playing his part as an entrepreneur and reducing the increasing unemployment rate. With the business trading for the, for, for the past five years, he has a current staff base of about 68 employees with plans of employing 100 people by June 2020. I'm sure he's already achieved this. Yeah. And we have not updated the, the bio. He's achieved this a long time ago. I'm looking forward to um, hearing more from him. But anyway, he currently, currently 80% of his employees are from Alex, where he comes from. And he's plowing back to his community where he grew up. His vision is to create a proudly South African sneaker brand, which all residing in Africa and abroad can resonate with. Um, the brand Batu has been growing in leaps and bounds since its launch in 2015. Um, his achievements so far, apart from the business doing well, He's been named as the Young Entrepreneur of the Year 2019 by South African Business Premier Awards. Forbes Africa 30 Under 30 in 2019, Emerging Business Entrepreneur of the Year 2019 by Sunlam and Business Partners, Fastest Growing Business Brand in 2019, he was a finalist at the National Business Awards, the Young Executive of the Year in 2019, he was a finalist at the National Business Awards, SME Award in 2019, he was a finalist at the Vision 2030 Awards, 2019, 100 Most Influential Young South Africans. Premier's Service Excellence Award by the Gauteng Provincial Government in 2020. Then Glove Jewelry Transformation Champion of the Year in 2020. Hennessy Businessman of the Year in 2020. Fast Growing or oh, Fast Growth Black Owned SMME Finalist by the Top Empowerment 2020. And also Top Empowered Young Achiever of the Year by Top Empowerment 2020. To mention just the least of his accolades, there's more that are still coming. This man is still young. His brand party has collaborated with iconic brands like Opal, Forbes Africa, amongst others, Sprite, and it is poised to make additional meaningful connections with other brands in the near future. He is an amazing young man. He values honesty, loyalty, and humility. Outside the office, Theo is an enthusiastic traveler, an epicure foodie, and an equatic fanatic who enjoys spending time with his family. He's got a quote that says, be authentic to your core, be wise, and be woke. Learn more about Batu by following it on social media, www.batu.co.za. If you come from America, it would be www.batu, that is B-A-T-H-U dot C-O dot Z-A. Ladies and gentlemen, Theo Baloi. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the invite. Hola. Shabunjan. I'm Nan. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you. For some reason at the back of my mind, I thought this had happen, happened already, you know? Yeah. Just to give you a little bit of a picture. So that bio clearly is uh, a little bit slightly outdated. And I think it was written in March, you know, and I, I heard you mention that 68 employees. So that was March 2020. And now we're sitting on 240 plus employees. 240 so employees. Just a little bit of in during a pandemic. So that was in the pandemic, March 2020, still in the pandemic to 240 plus. That is incredible, my brother. I'm very Thank you. proud of you. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So at Mofire, we're sitting on 260. Wow. So we are already employing. <laughs> so both of us are employing 500 people at yeah. least. Just within this table. <laughs> on this table alone. Just on this table yeah. alone. Yeah. I think that also shows a lot of young bro 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 brothers and sisters out there what's possible. Sure. Because what I love about our journeys is that it, it happened literally in front of people's eyes. Mm. Our business is six years old. Yours is five years old. Yeah. And we are already equally employing that amount of people. Sure. I'm so proud of you. Thank you, brother. And I think it's quite humbling, you know, for to hear you say that because you're one of the first people, you know, that really, you know, took us under your wing and, you know, advocated for what we stand for, you know. And, you know, look at us today, you know. Uh, it's, 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 I think it's, 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 it's a growth that everyone has contributed to, you know. It's a collective growth. Yeah, we, 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 we owned it. It was like sure. our brand. 100%. You know, and... And I think that's the spirit we need to all have. Yeah. And, and that's what I love about us, this generation that is doing this entrepreneurship thing in South Africa now that, especially the ones that are on camera. Sure. You know, there's a lot of others behind the camera yeah, who yeah. people don't know about. But what I love is that we are mm. you know? Mm. Nini now support a eat rip. Yes. Uno, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just that. That, that, that support, that unity. And I think for the longest of time, I think, you know, we as Africans, we've been, you know, looking for that. And, and, and I think what's humbling is that we are all doing it. You know, we are all at the forefront of, you know what, Skateli, man, you know, we can actually do this on our own. You know, we don't need anyone to come and advocate and tell us how great we are. You know, we need to look within. Utsepo needs to look within, you know, um, the rich needs to look within, Theo needs to look within and say, we can actually do it. And we've got the people you know, to support us, you know, and it's that unity. Before the world receives, you know, uh, Master KG Jerusalem, we need to be able to dance with here in Africa, in the African song, you know. And by the time Ronaldo makes a video, we're like, no, that's us. You, you, you know, we are trendsetters. You are leading. Not the other way around. It's not mm. like Ronaldo setting the trend. The trend should start here, Bob. I, I totally agree. And I'm going to take you many years back before yeah. Abu Patu uh, and, and all these accolades. Um, back into the apartheid era and as Sazal was seen to our neighbors in Beitu. Who is Theo Baloy? Sure. Yo, 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 yo. Uh, Theo Baloy is... And take your time. Don't, sure. Don't, um, don't jacha the story. Yeah. Take your time and share the story. We want to know your background because it gives context yeah. into the understanding why you do what you do and what you represent because mm. now we understand your background. Yeah. So, um... I, I, I had on the bio, uh, it read that I actually spent most of my youth in Alex. It's actually true, partly true, because I was born and bred in, in Pretoria, lived in a village, you know, called Pake. It's a few kilometers outside Hamaskra. That's where I was, um, I think I was brought up, you know. I went to a middle school there, you know, went to a high school there. Um, I was one of the fortunate kids, if I say so, to have been brought up under the custody of, you know, met, uh, wedlock or marriage or under the council of marriage because I was brought by, you know, my my dad, you know, and, 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 and my mother with my younger sister who works with us in the business, you know, and we come from a middle class family. And the reason why I say that because my dad was a male nurse, you know, worked at a hospital in Hammerskull called Jubilee Hospital. My mother was a um, store manager at one of the leading Furniture store. I don't know if I can mention that, but then no, no, you can. Yeah, yeah. Louis Furniture store. I don't know if you remember but you Louis. Know, I mean, I mean, I promote everyone. <laughs> yeah. <I don't> care. <laughs> Louis Furniture store, and um, and I think they did everything that they could to um to to afford us, you know, a a, a better life, you know. So we never went to bed hungry or anything, you know. I've always had clothes and food on the table, and I went to obviously public schools, you know, um, that has taught me a lot. And I say a lot. Public schools that has taught me humility, humanity, respect, has taught me integrity. Because we used to walk about two kilometers. 
Like almost lazy, 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 you know? <laughs> so you used to walk two kilometers, you know, all, and run a lot on lack all the time because I'm much used. Right, I'm not going to lazy, you know? Because now plumber LX, now you plumber go much lazy, you know? So yeah, I walked two kilometers to school and we learned a lot through that, you know, journey and that transition, you know, and a lot about who we are. And it has taught us to be, I think that's where the aspirations, you know, came from because Nari Shabakrutma and go friends like this, Hussein, UIFM, you know, and we aspire to do great and to believe in ourselves and know to, to understand that we are not defined by our circumstances. So, and one of the things that I think I think I I am grateful for, you know, um, with my parents, what they did for us was that when I matriculated Koskela, you know, I was very good in accounting, but because of in my village, Kopake, you know, the, the common professions or careers, nearly like to be an nurse. You know, a policeman, if you've made it, you are a doctor and it's only a few selected that make it to that. But I was very good in accounting. And the connotation around accounting was that it's difficult, it's too technical, you can't make it. To a point that even my accounting teacher at high school used to say that the accounting that they teach you was scalar in high school. It's completely different from accounting that you, 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 you get taught go, go varsity, you know? But because my dad then had this entrepreneurship going on, so he left his job after 15 years in, in the medical fraternity to go and be into real estate. He was very entrepreneurial in nature, you know? So he became an estate agent, not by the property, you know? Those type of things. So all the time he used to carry my report, up on side, like, you know, the lawyers, the conveyances, um, you know, how well I'm doing. They will say, your son is good in accounting. You know, you can actually do very well in this profession. And back then, you know, we had limited or few black accountants. Like, this great opportunity for that. So that's where I grew up, you know, um, Kopake. And um, late 2008, I did very well when I matriculated. Very, very, very well. I got about three distinctions, Koskela. And, um, and my dad just believed in me. But because of the credit crunch at the time, 2008, uh, with what was happening with, you know, um, inflation and what was happening in the economy, the, the first pandemic, yeah. <laughs> the first economic pandemic, the, the, the pandemic that happened in 2008, you know. Um, and that was the second. Well, that was the second, yeah. Because it was the, the first world back the then, 1979, depression. the depression, yeah. yeah. Then there was 2008. When that happened, property market was shuttered, obviously, and my dad couldn't sell properties. But he believed in me so much. You know, because of my and 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 my grades and 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 the kind of man I was becoming, um, you know, he sold his car for me to go to varsity, and I was actually having a conversation with my cousin that when I think about it now, that guy did not. He's late now, you know. Um, he did not leave me. He did not give me room to fail. Because what I used to go to Lazi, go 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 Lazi, danga. So meaning actually, I go choose. I can't play. I can't afford to. <laughs> To, 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 to go on the streets and, 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 and play with the opportunity. So he literally set me up to be great against all odds because I could not afford not to do well. So yeah, that's, that's, that's where I grew up. That's quite interesting. And Nelly Kai got Lazing. Big family, small family. No, 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 Ritu. I uh, only have a young sister. But the beauty about it, whatever I got I grew up with my cousins, you know, um, yeah. with my aunts. Yeah. So we all one big happy family, you know what I mean? But yeah, God loving on Ari too, and I've got many other cousins that I grew up with. Yeah, but both like, you know, they're not even your cousins. Yeah, you know? yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> and the move to Joburg? That was your life changing. Because I literally walked out of God uh with the bag coming to Josie. It's where you go yeah, deposit because my dad just sold the car. So the proceeds from the sale. Um and what's about Vasit to you need to pay registration, pay deposit, and come with a payment plan. So it's either going to pay quarterly, monthly, depending on how, you know, what you can afford. If we choose boy, we'll have cash the whole year. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which was never the case with me. So knowing that, okay, shop, I've got this money for deposit. And my dad was hoping that maybe we'll sell two, three houses in a year and settle the school fees. And that never happened. So when I came, which was because, you know, obviously, you know, the only could afford the deposit. I had to live with my uncle. It's a Josie, diploma, uncle. You know, who also works with us in the business today. Diplomale and Nako LX. And that's where the, I think the LX story began. So that's why people always say, no, Theo, from LX, from LX. Because Diplomale LX, during, you know, my becoming, you know, um, when the entrepreneurial bug beat me there, you know, I, I, when I was studying in the Diploma LX, you know, so a lot of people know the Theo from LX. But before Theo from LX, there's a Theo from, from Kopak, 
You know? I like that. You know, one yeah. of my interviews um, I did with Dr. Sizwen Bofu Walsh, he was touching on his, his white mother and his black father being yeah. um, obviously advocate Dalum Bofu. And he always says people focus on this, the, his, his, the story from the father's side and his later years. Yes. But, uh, you know, everybody neglects or, or people don't even know yeah, about yeah, yeah. his other side of like the sure. upbringing and just his mother being there. Yeah. The, you know, the side of his mother. Mm. So a lot of the times people only be exposed to, you know, a certain part of your story. Sure. So that's why these types of inter- interviews are important. 100%. Because the community where you come from, people who know you from there, mm. or parke, yes. they are now on some, how, oh, how, oh. hey, I've, ha- ha- I've, ha- ha- I've had that debate before. <laughs> <laughs> Almost killed for it. <laughs> but how, oh, this guy, uh, <laughs> Asar Tava, no. Asar Tava. <laughs> because it's very important, guys, in our communities for us to, because we never forget where we come from. We know we're Africans. It's very important for you to never forget where you come No matter how much you can get blessed, always recognize, acknowledge, and give back to where you come from. That's what we all do. Yeah. So I appreciate you for that, for touching on that part. Because sure. I also didn't know. Sure, for sure. So, um, obviously, you know, um, uh, the house in Alex, it's a family house. You know, uh, sort of our own generation, generational story and passing on, you know, property. So it's it's a house that belonged to my great, uh, my, my uh, grandparents. From my mother's side, na hope loma anke alida. So I feel like obviously my grandparents are not here. We won. So the squash alena, you know, my chosen because I go to school, and because I've been visiting for the longest of time. Obviously in my bringing, like get like chosen school holidays, get like Alex. I've I had Andrew, you know, who's my best friend for over twenty plus years. So now I'm bringing, you know. And big up for holding him down. Yeah, He's sure. He's also a part of part two. Is yeah, another part. When I knew yeah. about part two from the sure. beginning. It was from the both of you. And Absolutely. you guys are still together. I'm proud of you. Even now, yeah. So, and I know Andrew as far back as like my, like childhood, you know? So, I think finally, Rafael are more chosy. So, he's studying law. I'm doing, um, I'm studying accounting. And, you know, in, in varsity, when I got here, because of where I come from, um, I remember my first day of accounting class, you know? I get to varsity, sit down, it's packed, over 100 learners in the class. And um, my lecturer comes in. I still remember that day. And he goes in and, and, and say, hi, everyone. My name is Timur Nyandero. I'm going to be a lecturer for Accounting 101. You know, right on the board there. And he says, first question in class. Uh, what are the top four accounting firms in the world? And almost out of a class of 100, maybe 90 plus, had their hands up. And I'm like, accounting firms? Remember, the firm that I know, it's a factory. So, and where I come oh, from. Oh, Godi Femme. Godi Femme. you know. <laughs> And coming from Mama's crowd, there's a Nestle factory there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so yeah, that's the well, first that 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 I know. Yeah. <laughs> so people raise their hand, they mention PwC, NS, Deloitte, KPMG, you know? And I'm like, young, say HIV. What, what, what did they do with the firms? Do they manufacture test books? <laughs> <Do they, laughs> the test books that you started, that's what they do? You know, then I realized that, you know what? I remember what my teacher told me that, you know what? The accounting we teach in high school and in Vars, it's completely different. So now, because I know that this, my dad sold his car for me to be here, and I don't even understand the simplest question in accounting class, that shows that I'm already at a disadvantage and I need to maximize this opportunity. The best thing that I've ever done, Rotman, was immediately after that class, I'll never forget that day, I went to the library, went onto the computer, Google, and I said, I Googled the top for accounting firms and double clicked, okay, Deloitte, tax, audit, consulting assurance, or this is what it means. Oh, this is what a firm is. Then I grabbed it from then, the power of empowering yourself. What it can, how much it can able, enable you. And tell you what, you know, that year, that first year, I became the top accounting student of the year in wow. class. Wow. And that, that was in? In 2009. Uh, I went to, I started at Damelin, then over obviously did my um, postgraduate UNISA. Damilin, I think, Bram. Bram, uh, no, no, Bramley. There was one in oh, Bramley. Oh, Bramley. I yeah, know the one in Bramley. Yeah, yeah. Next to that was my first, first uh, campus that I went to when I started. And then? Yeah. And then obviously went on to do my postgrad with UNISA and going to PwC. So, so, and that year from that student who was, you know, didn't even know what an accounting firm is to being in a class of 100 to being number one, you know, because the power of just enabling myself and empowering myself. Because I was that kind of learner when we had, you know, go skelakotra. In a week, you've got maybe three, you're attending class three times. Yeah. 
Uh, the rest of the two days, you're off, you know? Yeah. you know? So I was at, at library on my off days. I was at library, you know, on Saturdays. And that enabled me to be able to compete with my, you know, uh, fellow students or my peers at class, in class, and, and become the person that I, that, that, that I am. And leading to the next year, I secured 100% buzzery. And still in that buzzery, the Tomorrow Trust, I became the top accounting student of the year. When I went to my third year, PwC came looking for a sponsor, you know, um, and then obviously, obvious, there's, there's, they're only looking for one guy and I was at the top. So they took me. And then before PwC, let's talk about the trust that helped you get educated because it's very important to acknowledge yeah. the people who were there for you when nobody was. Tomorrow Trust, I uh, trust very close to my heart, has done a lot, not only for me, but a lot of kids in South Africa who comes from the township. So the way I knew of Tomorrow Trust was that I had a friend at Varsity, Simon, Simon Mandelik, you know, who was part of the trust, you know. And obviously, as friends, I share the story. No, the reason how I came to be here, you know, or to, 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 to be, to attend school or to, to come to Varsity is because of they sold a cargo lolly, you know, and I'm looking for a buzzery. So you don't know, I'm part of the Tomorrow Trust, blah, blah, blah. And I applied for many, you know. And then, yeah, that's how I got in into the Tomorrow Trust. And it has helped a lot of people that are now today young business leaders, that are corporate executives, you know, um, that are doing amazing things and that have created great impact in communities. It's not only Theobalo Ibit, but there's many others. I think over the last, I stand to be corrected, I'm talking about over the last maybe 10 years, over a thousand kids that are now leaders in respective industries and were started by a great woman who now lives in, you know, um, New York, very close to us, our mother, Kim Feinberg, you know, from Cape Town. Did amazing, you know, uh, in terms of impacting change in South Africa. You know, great... Um, you know, I think a change pioneer. And today we are because of, a lot of us, because of the Tomorrow Trust. Oh, that's incredible, man. And then what happened with the PwC journey? PwC journey, an interesting one, because, um, you know, so so before the PwC journey, I think, oh, we'll, we'll get back to this. So PwC, I was at the Tomorrow Trust. So normally what happens with, I'm sure you know it from SLEF, normally what happens is, you know, with um, the foundations, you know, um, or buzzary funds, corporates will come looking to sponsor students. So um, PwC was just after the economy crunch, they were just getting out of the economy crunch. And I think they just made a little bit of profit and they thought of just going back and giving back and just sponsoring a student because they were not doing that well, you know, but they found it in them to say, they will take some of the proceeds and sponsor students. So they went to Tomorrow Trust. They were like, hey, Kim, we're looking for just one top student, you know, in accounting that we can sponsor. In return, when they graduate, that student is going to come and work for us. That's how I got in because of Tomorrow Trust, I was the top accounting student of the year. Um, I believe I had great values. I embodied what they stand for. And me being there means that if I do well at PwC, I can open more doors for other kids at Tomorrow Trust because they're going to go like, oh, this kid from Tomorrow Trust is actually very good, you know? So let's go look for more. So that's how I got into that, did vacation work with them. They paid for my studies. After my postgrad, then I went on to a one-year fixed term, you know, contract just to work back what they've paid. Did so well in that. So I was not even guaranteed a job afterwards. So I did well in terms of, you know, um, interpersonal skills, um, soft skills and technical skills and delivering and, and just building that relation and, and just showing dedication and effort that I built great relations with the partners and the managers that they like, after my, when my contract ended, they were like, no way we let him Theo go. We're actually going to employ him full time. And that's how I got to be employed full time, you know, uh, at PwC. And it did not only end there because um, with my delivery at work, like I said, you know. And it was the PwC Bramfontein? No, it was PwC Sunning Hill at the time. Oh, Sunning Hill. Okay. They're now at the waterfall. Yeah, um, I, 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 was, I was very unfortunate not to be part of the waterfall clan. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They have a fancy office now, but we had the office before was in Sunning Hill. It was very nice as well, but obviously now it's much more nicer. But yeah. That is incredible. And... I mean, working at PwC as a, you were a CA, right? Yeah. So the CA story, I think we need to clear it. So, and oftentimes I get to, actually I was invited by Saka to come talk as well. And we, we had to clear that. So I did, I did management accounting route, which is CIMA. So it's, it's a different professional body. I did the CIMA route, not, not, not the Saka route. CIMA, it's more on um, advisory and consulting and, and Saka is more of audit than becoming a CA. So I did the other other body. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that is very interesting. Yeah. And I'm sure that's where you, you, you had a stint at learning about finances. 
learning about auditing. Yeah. And it sort of gave you a bit of a, or let me say the skills that you use today as an entrepreneur. 100%. And with that being said, the beauty about my journey and that journey and that exposure and experience is that entrepreneurship, I used to sell perfumes, cocas, door to door, myself and Andrew. That's where we learned, you know, um, I think the dynamics of entrepreneurship. And that's where, you know, the entrepreneurial bug beat me. Because even the way we started the perfume business, you know, the way we raised the money, the, 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 the seed capital, it was quite genius. And I'll tell you why I'm saying it's genius. Because myself and Andrew have explained that in varsity, you're not always busy. So you do your assignments, you do your schoolwork, then what? or blow me a rose bank the movie, or we don't want to do that because we listen to Rothman on YFM about how you need to, you know, um, just lead change and, and hustle and empower yourself and don't wait for opportunities and knock on opportunities. We tried knocking on opportunities, looking for VEC work at Edgar's and, you know, they never employed us. I guess we were never employable, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then we decided, okay, I'll call it business in Dwana, you know, just to keep ourselves busy because after scale, after library, what do we do? We can't just chill more gas. It's, you know, just raise money and pull the side hustle. And the way we started it, we didn't, we wanted to sell fragrances. And the reason why we wanted to do that in LX Cocas was Wahojuang, but Twaratan Wang, they like looking good, you know. Uh, but not every, and they hang around, go to parties, they go to different events, Cocas, but not everyone could afford expensive branded colognes, you know. So how do we then re bridge that? And the beauty about cologne is that you don't have to, you can't carry a bottle with, you just need to smell good. So if we get an oil-based perfume that is great quality and people can wear it and um, they can put it on and go out and, and it, it satisfies that need, then we can make money out of it. So we went on to look for an oil-based uh, uh, perfume supplier in Runback and we got that, but we didn't have the money to start to pay for the order. So we then knew a guy who lived in Alex, 2nd Avenue, Mapalfo. He used to sell uh, cufflinks, pocket square and ties, those hammers. And he had big stock, like my man. You're sitting with money here, you know. How about that you give us that on consignment? You know? We, <laughs> <laughs> and how chain was the thing at the time. So everyone was commuting with how chain because it was a new thing, 2010. So this young Atenese, Kennedy Atenese, you know, everyone was in corporate using how chain because it's a fashionable thing. But a bugger out how chain. We hustle, hustle, hustle. Sell ties, poker square. That business did so well. Went back, gave my ball for his share. We took the proceeds from that business. We bought our perfume order. And that business boomed, boomed to a point that I had a big clientele, big clientele. That's a base. So 600 bucks will come to me because we're selling a bottle 300. So we'll find my hot milk gas. And don't know about long. No, get off it. I soon get somewhere and get three bottles and get this, 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 this. Boom, six clip. And I'm just a student. She believes TV. So it comes to me. So I think that got to us because we thought we made it. Now we've got the system that is working for us. We don't need to go and hustle in the street. The money is coming. The beauty about that is that it taught us the dynamics of hustle. So going into corporate, it's a different dynamics. So I had the, the, the best of both worlds going to your question that when I went to corporate now, now I'm, I rotated within competencies from audit to asset management to strategy consulting and many other things, which is a completely different environment. You know, like I, talk, I spoke about soft and technical skills that I was exposed to, interpersonal skills, you know, manner of engagement, you know, in, in corporate and how you engage yourself. And I had that plus the street hustle, the focus, hence the businessman that I am today. I always say the same thing, even to musicians and anybody out there, that it's actually a beautiful training process to work at a corporate environment. I know that a lot of you guys, sometimes you, you feel like, no, I want to go start my own thing. It's okay. There's other people who are not yeah. meant to be entrepreneurs who are okay with working at a corporate environment or just working, which sure. is fine. But I want to say to you, while you're in corporate, learn about what he's just spoken about. Professionalism is the most important thing if you're going to become an entrepreneur, a business person. Yeah. You have to be a person of your word. You have to be professional. The way you carry yourself, the way you communicate with people. Um, the way reaching deadlines, working with teams, yeah, knowing how you know what I mean, like all of those little things that you might not take uh, that you might take for granted, and those are some of the things that you will need when you are running your own business, and I'm mm. sure that also helped you. It helped me a lot, and you know, Spoo, you asked earlier on, um, the, the journey to PwC did not only end in, um, in South Africa, you know, so corporate have things called secondments where, especially with firms that are global like PwC and many others where they've got offices in other parts of the world from London, you know, to 
you know, New York and so forth. You, and it happens one in a million times when, you know, a South African office says, oh, we're going to create a secondment opportunity for you to go to Nigeria and be there for a year or a secondment opportunity you can go to Germany for a year. It doesn't happen often. And my point is, you know, you, you, you get to get those opportunities through a mixture of skills. You know, um, and that is from soft and technical skills. So funny example, um, I was that kind of guy that was very ambitious, PwC, and very dedicated and focused to a point that I had great interpersonal skills. So if we're sitting in a, in a, in a boardroom of 10 people with our partners, when I go out for, for coffee, you know, for instance, I would go and ask and say, hi, guys, I'm going out for coffee. Anyone wants one? Obviously, I can't bring 10 cups at once, but the fact that I asked says something. Before I knock off, I would go to my manager. Hi, Ryan, I'm done with uh, all the deliverables that you've sent me. Any more work that I can do for you? You know? So those kind of things, you know? Sometimes your manager calls you the weekend. And I remember one day I was driving home to Pike and my partner called me because there was an assignment and a job that needed to be done, or completed on that weekend, you know? So he called me, I was going home. And he says, hey, Theo, how are you doing? Sorry to call in the weekend. I just wanted to check, you know, are you available? I'm driving Khrotman home with the grocery. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. I'm, I can, I'll be there in 20 minutes. If you need me, I'll be there. Because I always had that habit of driving with my laptop, being ready for work. Then I drove back. Then I had to call my parents. Like, no, I can't come through again. You know, I can't come through. They think I'm going for, to party or something like that. Yeah. I just want, it's coming up with games, you know? But I'm like, no, I have to go to work. Something came up. And I showed up. And I never told my partner that I was actually going home. But I showed up. So because I showed up, you know, it opened so many other opportunities and it made me different amongst my peers to a point that early 2013, I think, 2013, um, a secondment opportunity came through, actually a, a project opportunity came through where they were looking for um, a partner on the job, a senior manager, and a senior consultant. I was a senior consultant at the time. And out of a team of about, I think we had 3,200, asset management alone was about 600, you know, people on that. They chose me. One partner, one senior manager, and one senior consultant. I was not the smartest. I was the guy who was struggling with the Excel spreadsheet. I was struggling with my performance management reviews. I was struggling in sometimes with e-learning and training, but I was showing up. My attitude was great. I was never top in my projects. You know, you get rated. I was never a 1% performer, but I showed up. My attitude was great. And you know why they chose me? Because they know that even when they go to Dubai, I will always show up with great attitude. And it's the smallest things. Because I'm saying this because we live in an era where today's, you know, um, I think the, the, the social currency era and where people want to act like they've made it, they don't want to do the job. You know, so I was always willing to do the job. And, you know, it does not happen a lot. You have people that have been working for PwC for 10 years. They've never been outside South African borders. I was there for two years. And that project led me to a secondment that ended, you know, I was in Dubai for three years, a three-year secondment. So it extended to even a longer secondment. And people asked me, but dude, I know so-and-so has been here for eight years. I know so-and-so has been here for 12 years. They've never even went to Namibia on a project like this, longer like this, for this kind of period. And it's all, it's all about the attitude. Now, a lot of people ask themselves, or, you know, I also get these questions. I'm sure you, you also get, get, yeah. get that a lot as well. Like, when do I know um, how to jump from corporate into starting my own business? What happened in your journey? My journey, um, I had a beautiful journey from, if you look at where I started, thanks, where I started, the opportunities that I've gotten. So I've got a, a big mantra in life that I believe in. Um, which speaks about maximizing opportunities. You know, my, my, my life story is a, it's a life, it's a life story of opportunities well maximized to the T, to the T. That's what my life story is about. I look back in my life now. I don't think I look back and regret anything that Ish, I had that opportunity. I messed it up. Never. I don't have those kind of regrets because I believe that everything else that was awarded to me, I used it. I used it to grow myself. You know, um, and going to your question, with that being said, from maximizing the opportunity to be in varsity, having 100% buzzer, maximizing it, being the top accounting student of the year, PwC coming on board and, you know, funding me, giving me a one-year uh, contract, employing me full-time, 
going for a project in Dubai, you know, three months and end up being there on a secondment, you know, um, I maximized so well. But my reality man, was that I was the only one. I was the only one in my family. I was the only one in my community. And all the time I drive back my nice car, I'm buying a GTI, I'm way to buy, I'm to glen, I'm got it clean, moy, fresh. But when I drive into LX, my reality is different. I can't, I can't share, I can't connect. And I can't come back and blame my people. I can't come back and say, you guys are lazy, look at me, the car wash. I can't. And sharp, fairy, I'm trying to hand out, say, no, I'm going to sleep and I'm not. When I go back Monday, they go back to the realities. It's not sustainable. And I get to the launch, Emirates launch, and I'm with my corporate counterparts. I'm like, hey, how was the weekend? No, no, I'm, I'm in Cape Town. My other uncle owns one, the wine farm, you know, so we're chilling there. The family came through. Oh, I flew to Australia. My other cousin was getting married. Oh, anyway, guys, we need to you know, go to the boarding gate. We're about to check it. We're about to leave now, you know? And I'm like, but how was your weekend there? Young Plumekas. Plumenamachita. So who's fooling who here? Because I'm fine in like Nalamachit. As fine, like be different. Marcia Fan and Maras Fan. Maria, you know, it looks like Safan because of there's bacon and eggs from Emirates. You know what I'm saying? We get served the same in Emirates. We go and check in, in a fancy hotel, the same, because it's corporate standard that we should be treated the same when you travel. It's fun lab. But in reality, we are completely different. And long way corner, the thing with me grand. I grand. My reality doesn't change. You can be as successful as you are, but sometimes that, that's where we fail as black people. We, 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 we confuse where we are with our reality. No, um, a lot of us blacks, our realities hasn't changed. Our lives have changed. Yes. Hey, the grand. Your reality hasn't changed. So I took it upon myself not to blame my people, my community, my government, or corporate South Africa at large. I took it upon myself to do something about it. And the reason being is because of when, when I was back home, I realized that when I talk Namachi, the school man, you know, skip on and on. What happened? Most part of you know, and they tell you, nah, because of, you know, but, but yeah, the management was blah, 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 you know, the stories. And I realized that it's not because of a lot of these guys are are lazy or anything. If you look at the root of where they are, it's simply because a lot of them didn't get the opportunities that we've gotten. Not everyone has a dad who can sell his car. To go. Not everyone. Not everyone has an opportunity to go to varsity and get a 100% buzzering. And you can't come back and say, that person is lazy. You got the opportunities. And you can't get all the opportunities and come back and say, I'm successful. You know, therefore you have to worship me. So I found it in me to do something about it. And that is why our mission in the business is to reignite hope and create sustainable jobs. Because I realized that they've lost hope. They've literally given up. And you spoke about it earlier on to say, our story is not far fetched. Our people, Kukas in 10 Avenue, there's a lot of people that saw me picking the boxes. Packing the boxes, putting them in my car. Give a child like Nale, Nale interview, go Lech Rotman, go Massive Metro, go, go deliver party, go Chuna, go Chuna. They've seen, it's not a story, it's not PR. They've seen it to what party is today. And directly or indirectly, we can reignite the hope. So going back to your question, I, I had a bigger inner voice in me to be of service to my community. To be of service to my community by building a business that will give them hope and create sustainable jobs for them. And then I jumped ship, completely jumped ship to a business that, you know, was not even well established. Literally at proof of concept stage, jumped ship to come back home and build with my people. And my people that I share the same reality with and build something that is meaningful to us, something that we can all resonate with. And not only that, but something that can impact change for all of us, not only for Theo. And I left one job that provided for me and my family and started a business that provided for 240 plus people. How did it start? 
True. How did, how did Batu start? start? In case you've just bumped into this interview, we're hanging out with Theo Baloi, founder of um, South Africa's fastest growing, let me say Africa's fastest growing um, sneaker brand. It is South Africa's biggest sneaker brand. Um, as I've mentioned, I've always enjoyed entrepreneurship from the days when I used to sell perfumes. And that business taught me a lot from the art of selling, marketing. It's probably the biggest sneaker brand in Africa because I don't know of any other, but anyway... That's I. That's no, that's, no. You can say that we are on the top hundred most admired African brand. Ah, it's the biggest. Actually, let's put <laughs> it. Sitting that number way. ten, you know, Dark sitting number ten al- alongside big brands. Dark is that. Dark <laughs> that's why, you know. Sure, <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, sorry yeah. for this. No, and, and, and it's fact. It's not me. It's brands yeah, Africa. Yeah, you know, it's a survey, it's a survey conducted of in Africa in twenty eight countries. You know, with over. 80% of African consumers and when they go on, around asking about top brand brands and consumers in Kenya or whatever, they said Batu is number 10. It's not me. I'm not bragging because people tend to turn, turn it out of context and will tend, change things out of context. So that's what Brands Africa says. But anyway, Batu, um, as I've mentioned, the, the perfume business, that's where the entrepreneurial bug beat me. Um, went on to cooperate with PwC, a beautiful journey that exposed me to different world, you know, um, in on trade or in corporate or out of trade, PwC exposed me to true a lot of things that I was like, wow, you know. Um, but again, going back to the reality, you know, I enjoyed the the dynamics of entrepreneurship and what entrepreneurship can do and selling and and, and meeting people because we used to sell perfumes that are non branded, you know, like it's like all based. So you had to convince someone that this is a great cologne that you should invest in. So I missed that. So I thought about how do I go back and actually, you know, try to impact change in my community with the realities that I've, that I've just said now. Um, and I used to buy a lot of sneakers at the time, you know, uh, in Dubai, you know, uh, to a point that end of 2015, I had such a valuable collection of sneakers, valuable, but something was missing, an African brand. And you know, there's a saying that says, if you buy in too much of it, then why not own it? And I looked at my collection. You Say good, you heard it from me. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had it from you. A lot of things I've had it from you. I'm trying to speak this like I just believe me, love. That's my childhood. That's how I'm going to Exactly. You know, there's a saying that says, and I, I, I enjoy it when you say this. You always say that because you want to be a billionaire, you follow a billionaire. Yeah. You get it? Yeah. Because now we were inspired by you. So and, we followed and, you. You know what I'm saying? That is why Thea, I support you wholeheartedly. Yeah. Because Nya is good to young Lalel. No, no. And then Kaza, I think every teacher likes it when. In that teacher, each students like they apply on it. For that, sure. The more you focus on those students who listen. For sure, Khrodman. That's why I'm focusing on That's why I'm Yeah, sure. thank you. And, and I love you too, more than that. And I always appreciate, I know on WhatsApp and all the time, I always appreciate everything else that you've done for us. Because for me, I'll never forget it. Because you, 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 you allowed us to tap into a world that we didn't know it's possible. I mean, from far, Khrodman, from the way Skapang Akona, the wedding, the deals that you made, you know, the way, a lot of things we saw with Yazin, it's possible. Like I, hence I said, even the perfume business was like inspired by you saying you need to be a go-getter. You can't just stand and wait for opportunities. You need to start. You need to fail. You need to go push. You need to hustle. Bang in a vuoke. You know, it was those things. You say, my husband said, we can't just sit. Look, through the splomiras, kalamako wata sinza anipit. You know, sponsors kela si shai. Are we going to sit here? And we started a very successful business because we listened to you. And, you know, and many other things. So, Khrotman, you know, all of those things that I'm buying so many sneakers, then, you know, actually why... Why not just own it? And look at my valuable collection of sneakers. Then if I can actually start this sneaker brand, and I did about research and development um, and proof of concept for about 18 months. And one of the most interesting findings from that research that shocked me was that we've got about seven continents in the world. You look at um, South America, and each and every part of the world, each and every continent has a fair presentation of a sneaker brand. You look at South America, they've got Havanians and Ipanama. You look at the States, um, USA, they've got um, Nike started by Phil Knight, you know, uh, Converse started by Chuck Taylor, Under Armour started by Kevin Plank. It is now there's a black owned one, Yeezy. Yeezy, it you know? Is, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, and then there's obviously Europe, Puma, and Adidas. And Actually, we use the AE. We use the AE. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> now that, yeah, he's here. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I like the fact that Kanye has taken his brand to $6 billion status. Amazing. Because it's inspiring for people like amazing, us. Amazing, amazing. Now, what that guy is that with the brand is amazing. You know, he's a genius. So, and many other, you know, Italian food brands representing Italy. But I came down to Africa 
I'm like, let me find a sneaker brand from Africa. There's a lot of footwear brands, by the way, in Africa, a lot. But I couldn't find one sneaker brand that could be benchmarked with all of these international footwear brands that I've just mentioned, or all of these international footwear brands that are in my available collection. Benchmarked in terms of product development, uh, market share, we can even take it further to CSI, you know, as to what they're doing. Nothing. But yet there's billions and billions of US dollars that leaves Africa going elsewhere. You know? So I was like, let me start a... So I, that's where our vision was, 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 I think, born. A shoe brand that Africans can proudly affiliate with. Iba too. I'm going to build a brand that can be benchmarked with all of these footwear brands. And a guy in Italy can look in this brand and say, I like that brand, not because it's from Africa, but because of what their brand promise stands for. Because their sense of style speaks to who I am. Their core value speaks to who I am. And I'm going to go in and support that brand. Not because of his black owner or anything, but because, you know, it, the brand values and the brand promise that he speaks about. And that is why we buy Nike. We don't buy Nike because of, you know, Phil started in origin and did this. No, we buy it because of the brand promise that he speaks about. You get it? We, it, we affiliate with certain values that it, it, it says or it has, you know, or the brand offers. So I wanted to build a brand that can be benchmarked. And if I can do so, I can be able to impact change my community with the realities that I was exposed to. And that's how it started. I love what you've just said, because what you've just said says to, to us, and, and which is a, a conversation which was necessary at the time to scream black owned, scream black owned, mm. even me when I started my brand. But yeah. the more I, I grew deeper and I started understanding business more and more in our, in our more fire, let's focus on more fire journey. Sure. I started understanding with no, People are not buying something because it's black owned. Yeah. They don't care who owns it. Absolutely. Some of, you know, sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's actually about brand promise, as yeah. you're saying. The, it's core values, the quality the of quality. the brand, yeah. the beauty, and those types of things. And it's like, guys out there who are hustling, the, the language shouldn't just be, hey, I'm black owned, buy me because I'm black owned. No, you have to deliver. Mm. For your clients. Your clients want professional service. Your clients want you to be a, a person of your word. What you promise you must deliver at a time at which you would. Pr and if, if they, they do buy your product, it must be of quality so that then you get repeat sales. And then the more you get repeat sales, the more those people start talking about it. They introduce others to it. So it's more about the actual brand as opposed to it's black owned. For sure. 100% and 100%. And that's how we're going to be able to rebuild because even the people that you know, support our brands. They know that, you know, they are supporting it for the right reasons. And, you know, it's it's offering something that, because remember, when, you, when you're building a business or brand, it needs to have, it needs to contribute to someone's life, either by efficiency, you know, by cool factor. It needs to do, I need to buy something and feel like, shucks, man, I, I used Uber and it's so convenient. I used Uber and it's not because of anything else. The convenience that it brings to me as a consumer there should be something that it does to the consumer that it makes the consumer to go back for more. More than anything. I totally agree. Yeah. So so, so that USP has to be clearly communicated before Carl or anything. It's very important. Now, it's not an easy thing to start a business from scratch. And yeah. you literally started from the streets delivering it. And, and you see, if there's one thing I have to give to you is you've always... Now, or now, at that time. Sure. And Nangin, and I was like, yeah, no. And even the professionalism, even no man ifuna emi was a letter earlier. Sure. And you've always been like that all the way up Thank until you. today. And I'm yeah. so proud of you for Thank that. you. Thank you, sir. So yeah, and it's been very difficult. So um, and another interesting part with Ipa to uh, going back to the story how he started was that when I was at corporate at PwC, so I was obviously at an accounting firm that afforded me an opportunity not only to do the same thing over and over again, but I rotated within competencies. And I had privilege of working in measures and acquisitions, you know, competency or department, you know, and working on a project. And I realized something with when I was reading the balance sheets that oftentimes um, businesses, when they start, you know, quite early, and you see it in Silicon Valley with the tech companies, they sort of, you know, sell, you know, a stake quite immediately after POC, approval concept, they just go, okay, we're going IPO, we're going equity or debt, you know, on the stake of the business. So, Passion project, obviously, I love sneakers, I enjoy sneakers. And then also I started asking myself that, is it really possible to build a business with 100% equity, build it from scratch and scale it? 
scale it heavily with 100% equity because I've never seen a balance sheet like that. And I got into it and it's something that I still need to do my thesis on, which is equity, which I enjoy. I enjoy the topic of equity, you know, um, and, and, and instrument and financing, you know, and I want to do my thesis on and finally do my master's on, you know. So it's like, let me start and see if I can really take this savings of mine that I've built, you know, that I've invested in so well um, and start a business. And going back to the, the, the topic earlier on of maximizing opportunities. So when I went to Dubai, I was earning four times what I was earning in South Africa, tax-free. And I could have easily used that money to live the Instagram life and wear brands and travel the world. I mean, I'm in the Middle East. I could easily go anywhere. Going to London is cheap flights. You know, going to New York is cheap when you're in the Middle East. So I could have easily lived that life. But I decided not to, to take the savings and deploy them into starting this business and use them as seed capital to start the business. And from day one, growth money has always been about, I really want to see how far I can go with building this end-to-end value chain and with 100% equity and scaling it. And that's why we've started the way we've started. Left my job, went back home, uh, started from the beginning. All the components of our value chain, I've done it. I've packed the boxes, I've delivered with my own car, I've posted on social media, I've replied comments on social media, I've done PR, I've done strategy, I've done you know um, finance modeling for the business. The value chain of our business, I, I sat down and thought about it. I didn't look at any other retailer and said, oh, this is how they're doing it. I'm going to replicate it. I kid you not. The reason why we're doing our business the way we're doing it, the reason why from means of production to warehouse facility to having our own trucks to having our own store to distribution is something that I thought about. I never looked at anyone and said, oh, who's doing it like this, you know? So therefore I'm going to do this. So it's more fire. I'm going to test it and call it this. So he's going at black only. Now I'm going to go black owned, you know? I'm going to go. No, I, I really thought about that and did about 18 months of research and development and looked at retail dynamics in South Africa and how am I going to be different? You know, the, the lessons from old brands that have failed, that have done well but failed. Where do I think they got it wrong? How do I take their lessons and embody them into my, into my thinking and incorporate them into my model? And how am I going to assess the risk that killed the businesses that started from Kukas and grew? Because we come from an era when um, a business Kokasi is doing very well. It's a general dealer. They supply the whole township. They're the richest in the community. They've got a corner house, a beautiful house. But as soon as the dead dies or the founder dies, the business dies, We've got that business never corporatized and scaled to be a shop right. We've got a business that had 50 taxes, you know, um, cocas, and they were the richest. But that business never corporatized and scaled to be an Uber business. So I was like, where are they getting it wrong? I want, I don't want this business that, and I was in the, I was in the Alex when I was thinking that. I'm not going to end here. You know, our journey is not going to end here. Yes, I'm starting here, but I'm going to scale it and grow it. And today that business that you know, started in a room in Alex is rated and listed on top 100 African brands, ranking number 10 you know, in Africa. And that's what the vision is about. And that's how I started you know, and, and, and built the business and grew it. And that was also a privilege from exposure and corporate as to how to build a business model because we own the end-to-end value chain of our business. That is incredible to own the end-to-end value chain of your business because not a lot of people do so. Sure. And and sadness pass with eh, I'm lazy. Mm. And then Mrs. Okay, so I supply a bonke bonange basov the bashai cop and pays with the brand yeah, but the scenes sure. grand grand. It is yes. supplier. You know? Yes, yes. So you were able Werner, to figure that out and actually do it um the right way. Yeah. And I still say you are still in you are still in your infancy. I think this is still early stages. Yeah. Sure. I can imagine where, where is the journey going, Vel? The journey is going, you know. I mean, obviously, we've got um, you know, um w- with our vision. So everything I started doing our vision, Krotban, it's it's well aligned and thought of. We don't do things or social currency to trend or to sound relevant or anything like that. We do everything else um, with informed decision and the right insights that goes into decision-making in our business. From when you talk about a vision that Africans can, a, a true brand that Africans can proudly affiliate with, I always say this, you can audit everything that I say. You can audit everything else that our business stands for. And you will find that it's a, a true reflection of that. It's not for any other thing. So you go to the mission to, create, you know, sustainable jobs and reignite hope, you know, 
we have done that with the 240 people. We've actually just now got the job creation company of the year at the top empowerments nominated again amongst big corporate brands that have been here for decades and centuries. Just the other year, we got the transformation champion of the year at the BBQ Awards because of the transformation that we've made in our communities. So you can audit the mission. It's not, you know, the vision again, a shoe brand that Africans can proudly affiliate with. Brands Africa comes and says, these guys are on the top 10, top 100 most admired African brands. And this is in number 10. So it's a vision that goes into that. So um, where we are going, we obviously have footprint in South Africa and we want to start penetrating the SEDEC region. We've got great appetite in, 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 in SEDEC, huge appetite. Actually, we're looking at the stairs the other day with online orders. You know, a lot of people from Botswana supporting the brand buying. You know, um, Swaziland is massive. I think we're doing over like 60 orders in a week to Swaziland. You know, and we've got great appetite in Kenya as well, you know, East and West Africa. So in the next 10 years, that's where we want to go. We already have an online presence and the brand has great appetite there. So we want to now start scaling towards that. And there's a strategy in place as to how we're going to do it. And when I talk strategy, it's informed from the mechanics of the value chain. So the, the, the bar, bar to South Africa won't trade the same as bar to tra Kenya. It will have the same ethos and same values and same brand promise, but the way we're going to execute it will be completely different from how the guys at Batu Kenya do run business there. You know, so we already put that strategy together as to how are we going to operate and trade in different regions. That is incredible, man, and I love to hear that future because um, that's what we're doing all of this for for the future and for Indona Zetingo Zet, you know, mm. for, for legacy. Yeah. And I love the fact that this conversation is now louder than it's ever been. Sure. And I think this is the best time than ever before yeah. to do anything if you want to do it. Yeah. The internet is on your side. The sure. The IR that um, we've been speaking about all these years that the government has been preaching about mm. is here. Mm. And the 4IR is not regulated by anybody. Yeah. Obviously, the tech companies can censor you here and there. That is if now Kulumis and there's controversial is stored. Or is you can do or say without having to be too harsh or get yourself into those predicaments or entanglements of getting censored. Yeah. But I think you can use the internet um, to your advantage, just like what you guys are doing right now. For sure. And how we've literally both built brands using the internet. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. worked for us. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. We, we are true examples of what you can look at and say, let me do it in my own way because Batu is doing it, because um, Richmond is doing it, or because Tapo the Gin Maker or Drip is doing it, or because whoever is doing it. But right now, you are positioned in the best. Um, times the world has ever been in and that is for IR and what Absolutely. I'd like for you to have is just that talk um, to the audience about some of the things that they can do now yeah. to, to, to get themselves out there to build themselves you know because mm. a lot of guys out there they're coming from COVID-19 lockdowns a lot of them are, are demotivated people some of them they've been trying maybe they were sort of doing well but their businesses got shut mm. down by COVID-19 some of the guys maybe want to get into entrepreneurship, mm. but corporate. You know. But what are some of those things that you you would like to share with the guys out there so that they can, you know, get themselves up and, and, and go for it? Yeah, there's there's quite a bit that I can I can share in that regard. But I think, you know, for me, I want to say this that we as Africans, you know, Africa has been at the receiving end for the longest of time. The receiving end of um, the latest app, the latest trend, the latest technology, the latest ecosystem, and many other things. We are always at the receiving end. Sometimes we are even at the uh, at the at the receiving end of our own talent. <laughs> we are at yeah, the yeah. receiving end of Master Cages. Yeah, Jerusalem. Simklema after. 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 Trevor Simklema after. We are at the receiving end. Of course, <laughs> you get it. When they pop it's over, so it's, hey, no hey, it's so sad. Only now you want to replay. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's ours, you know. But Kalela, no, like the song was played, you know, on Massive Metro Fest before it was like pumped in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> you get it. We are at the receiving end of, and I think it's just in our nature. So I want to start there to say, let's change how we think. And the best way to do that, it's Africa is known to be a continent that is filled with so much heritage. That is why there's a hashtag going on on social media now that says, Africa, your time is now, something like that. Because there's so much heritage and so much that the rest of the world is looking, you know, in Africa. 
from content creation to music to businesses to minerals to many other things. So we as Africans, we are duty bound to embody and take our heritage and incorporate them into ecosystem, into value chains, into product and services that the rest of the world can receive, into content that the rest of the world can receive. That's where we start. And how do we do that? We start by building. We start local, but we, we build for global in everything else that we do. The days of building a business because I want to supply a temple who's in Soweto, you know, in 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 in, in Fos Flow, you know, in Gugule too, or the guy next door are gone. Everything else that we do, we need to be intentional about who we're building it for. And the market that we should build for is global. Yes. Let's start local. Let's, you know, push the local flag. But we need to have that end picture in mind, end picture in mind that is, you know, global, building for global scale so that anyone can use our product and services, can embrace them so that we can actually grow and build for the world. That's where we need to start. And with that being said, oftentimes people think about, oftentimes, you know, people think being a genius or being great, you need to do the crazy stuff and the genius stuff. But sometimes the simplest things that you need to do, sometimes it's not a matter of, you know, building your own more fire, but what value can you add to more fire? You know, if 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 they're saying they're not recruiting, maybe you need to come to propose and say, no, yeah, sharp, you cannot hire me, but this is what I can do for you guys in your processes. Do you know what I mean? And I say this a lot with people who ask me about factories and minimum order quantity and things that they can't meet the demand for to say, but I can't meet this and because I can't afford this. But what have you asked the supplier? What is it that he can do? Not that it can add value, not in monetary terms, but that can probably even help, you know, um, optimize their processes in return for them to cut down their requirements. You get it? Mm. So, so, so I can't buy 500 more fire cans that was out of the money, but I can come and work so that you can give me the hundred and I can go sell so that I can come back. You know what I mean? That value add. And that's why we need to think because everyone is just thinking about, I just want to build, build, build my own. And these guys are closing doors for me. You know what I mean? I'm like, dude, it's not about that. Yes, you've got a camera and people are not allowing you to come and do the production of products, but what is it that you can add, you know, on their value chain and probably even in their basket of expenses and say, no, but you don't have to pay that to get that. I can do it for you at value. And then in return, this is what you can do for me. And that's how sometimes you start. Very interesting, and I'm excited that you're touching on that because these guys really matter to us. We want you guys to succeed, and we want you guys to even be better than us. Yeah, you know, because that's why we're sharing as we go on our journey. You know, we also what we are doing. There, there is no blueprint. There's no blueprint. You know, we we're also figuring it out. But as we go, we're obviously creating a blueprint for for everybody else to follow. As you make money, you have to invest it somewhere. Mm. What are some of your thoughts as far as investments are concerned? True. I've actually, uh, again, you know, I've been exposed to a very, like earlier on you asked me about Bitcoin and I've, I've been, I can't say much about it, but I've been exposed to a world that has been so fascinating for me and a world of portfolios. And it's, it's an amazing world. Like to say, you know, how other people are just invested their money and they've sort of had businesses that, has, that are running independently without them and they've literally taken the basco or a bulk of their wealth and that wealth is still working for them in portfolios and all they do they wake up with coffee and just you know just check portfolios and they get into meetings with asset managers or portfolio managers and move cash oh this one is not doing well because of this is what's happening in Kenya so we're going to move it and put it here and the returns are insane returns that you know some people have to work their lifetime for they make it in a day or in a week because of portfolios. So for me, uh, that's that's an interesting space that I've just been exposed to and that I'm enjoying at the moment while, you know, obviously building Batu. And I'm a, I'm a firm believer in, you know, profiling before diversification. So I, I, I rather profile and build a steady business and grow it with, without just being, you know, doing many other things. But obviously it comes into investment. Um, yeah, that's something that I've just learned and um, I'm playing in that space and, and it's a beautiful space to, to play in. It's beautiful, guys, to have that conversation about money and what he's talking about, investment. You got to invest your money somewhere because if you just make the money and keep it, yeah. remember money is losing value every year. But if you look at the future, it's just like when public phones were a thing of the past, Ama smartphones were coming in, Ama cellular phones. Just like when pff, they used to be able to read us, digest, about Kodak, the yeah. world changed to what it is now. So you don't want to be left behind. There is something called digital currencies. Sure. And I'd like to encourage you guys to go research about it, 
go learn about digital currencies out there. There's so many opportunities where we can start investing and seeing good returns actually in a short space of time as mm. opposed to in a long space of time. But with that being said as well, every industry, whenever there's opportunities, then there's criminals also who get to partake in those industries and they take advantage sure. of people who don't have enough knowledge. That's why I would encourage you if you want to get into Forex trading, go learn about it. Understand it first before you can get your money in it. Even when you understand it, start with little monies. Don't put in big bucks. But what I've just started right now is I've just started getting introduced into the blockchain technology. Nice. So I'm currently doing um, courses things what they, they would say cryptocurrency for dummies yeah bitcoin for dummies yeah so i'm still a dummy right now. yeah yeah so as i learn i'll share sure and i would like to encourage you guys to also start learning about the future of money the future of money isn't digital absolutely absolutely and i think it's it's that 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 approach that we need to play in something that is going to dominate you know uh in the future imagine if they say all oh, in the future five ten years you know uh the value of the, the money that you have now, it's only half of what digital currency is. So if you have X amount in digital, it actually worth more than, you know, um, whatever in, 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 in commodity or something you know what like I mean? that. Yeah. I mean, I, you, you get it. And you're like, yo, if only I knew I would have taken all of this digital, you know what, you I, know mean? what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. it's still early. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I mean, digital currency is like what, uh, maybe a decade old or so, but it's still early. It's sure. still in its infancy. So it's great opportunities for people to learn first and then start um, yeah, start investing because investment is the way. But you remember when we were growing up, we're brainwashed into believing savings are good. Mm. Savings are good. Yes, yes. But I'm teaching my child investments more than saving. Saving. Because when you're saving there, you're relying on the, the returns that you're getting from the bank. And the life that we're living now, 2022, <laughs> those returns are not that <laughs> yeah, no. attractive for a lot of no, us. No, you know? not at all. It's like... <laughs> So you look at it and you're like, really? Like, you know, you just laugh and you're like, no, no way. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Because a lot of the money is is not worth the paper that is printed on. No. I mean, if you look at um governments like the American government, for instance, I mean, the <laughs> those are other conversations that we'll have another day. But sure. the minerals that we have and the wealth of minerals that we have on the continent here, yeah, and you look at countries like America or the American governments, like they don't have enough gold mm. to back up the amount of um, paper, that the amount of money that they're printing on paper every yeah. year. Yeah. And on top of that, the trillions and trillions of dollars that they're in debt um, should wake you up into thinking, am I really just going to keep on I think maybe it's time for me to learn, to learn. about other ways of um, growing my money. And that's the homework that I'm giving you. 100%. I'm proud of you, bro. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank I'm you. glad this has happened. <laughs> Means a lot coming from you, eh? <laughs> yeah, your boy, you know? Sure. So proud of you, man. And Thank I can't you. wait to see you. Um, I can't wait to be in New York or to be in, in Germany. And I'm a billboard. But, yeah. But, sure. but, and those days are coming. I'm coming, definitely. Like you said, we're still in infancy, you know, um, phase. So there's, there's a lot of, I think, maturity, brand maturity that's going to happen and brand exposure, you know, and that is, and brand takeover even, you know, that is just going to happen. And, you know, yeah, um, looking forward to that. And one of the last things that you said before I let you go, you, you spoke about focusing on building Batu. Although you are learning and sure, educating yourself, sure. but you just want to focus on building this thing, which is the same journey I'm on. Just mm. Focus on building this thing. Yeah. But why are you looking at yeah. whatever you think you can sort of, you know, but the focus, you can't lose this focus. Because yes. this is the main baby. Yes. They always say, um, the main thing must be the main thing. The main thing you must know? be the main thing, you know? And I think there's a lot of people that we look up to that have done that very well. Because, you know, I think people... Um, also, one thing that I've realized that sometimes we fail at maximizing our resources and, and uh, deploying them in the right avenues. You know, one day when the, our business are big enough, you know, we will be able to have the luxury of them running. And just because the resources that we are exposed to, we can literally hoi quickly and build again. You know what I mean? Like, like, like... I, Dr. Uh, Patrice, like, I want to be... A, I'm a good ambition. I want to be a CAF president. That, that's an ambition that I have in 2019. I'm going to make it happen. Yeah. I'm going to pull it. Like, it's, it's not going to take me long. You get what I'm saying? And with due respect, I mean, there's a lot of people that have been in, in the soccer fraternity, but if you ask them about that vision to, to, to be a CAF president, it takes a lot. But because of what I've built and my profile and my credentials and what I'm capable of, it's going to be a vision to me and I'm going to achieve it in a year. 
So, 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 so what I'm trying to say is that sometimes when you focus on building one thing and it, and it gives you resources, you get to a point where you look at the resource and go like, okay, I'm going to take one billion, 500 million and blah, blah, and take this resource and buy the best CA, buy the best marketer, buy you know the best IT specialist and put this thing together. And in two years, I'm going to run it. I totally agree. You, you, you get it. I totally agree. Whereas if you don't have the resources, now you still have the same, you need to put the same effort in building that one thing again. That's just my view. I totally yeah. agree. I was yeah. having the same conversation with Black Coffee. Sure. Black Coffee's main thing is music. Music. DJing. But look at, yeah. But, you see, Black, but Black Coffee is a partner at Yoko. Actually, I went far fast with, with, with Patrice. I should have yeah. used Rodman Black Coffee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's music. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's the same as Jay-Z. Sure. It's, it's music. Music, yeah. The main thing is the main thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's very important. And maybe lastly, maybe let's touch on the, before we let you go, let's touch a, a little bit on the, the balancing of the private life. Mm. Outside of uh, being the businessman, yeah, I know you're a businessman. Even when you are anywhere, yeah. wherever you are, yeah, yeah, you know your, your brand follows you because you live it. Sure, but I mean, how do you, how do you live your life? I mean, family, no, see, flow. yeah. So, so, so I spend a lot of time with, um, with my family. You know, my family, my cousins. Um, I've got a very small circle. I only have one best friend, one best friend that has ever come to my house to chill. I've, there's no one who can tell you that they've been to my house. I was chilling with you. In Jami, we snapped. No, 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 no. Let's meet at the restaurant. If you know, because I'm very careful about energy that I bring into my circle, into my space. And because growing up, I've always been this. You know, I've I've always been a, I would say a loner, looking deep into who I am. I've I've, I've I think I'm 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 about personal development and self-awareness. And when I'm when I don't have a lot. I'm not surrounded by a lot of energy. I get to focus on that and self-awareness and my core and develop from that. So I spend a lot of time with people that know me from many, many years ago, which are my cousins and my best friend. And yeah, that's about it. Then generally I enjoy, um, I enjoy, I enjoy cars. So I would just go to uh, maybe an, a track race in, in Zodkop, MG track race and do a drive there. Um, I would just go away in weekends. I enjoy traveling. You know, I, I started liking or enjoying traveling when I was in Dubai, you know, and the luxury that comes with and what expose you to. So I spend my money there as well. You know, obviously now it's locked down. It's very, very hard to travel um, abroad. But yeah, you know, that's what I like enjoying and going home and just, you know, being with my mom and my, my sister and that's about it. So I've, I live a very boring life if people call it, because I hardly go out. You know, our agency always invites me to events. Always. They even stopped. They're like, don't even, don't even bother. I've, I've, I've been invited to top great events in the country, like keep it happening, VIP treatment, you know, uh, and all, and riders and all of that. And they even stopped. They're like, don't even bother inviting Theo. He's not going to come. He's just not going to come. So, and not because of I'm antisocial, but I just, prefer a very small circle. That's beautiful, bro. And maybe lastly, I'm going to send you this video in 20 years. Yeah. 20 years time in Zobingna 62. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to tell you a video. I'd like for you to look at yourself in the camera. You are speaking to, how old are you now? Um, 30, 31. You are speaking to a 51 year old self. Look yeah. at the camera and speak to Lela Taima. What would you like to say to him? Probably when you're watching this, you'll be sitting with your wife and your children, maybe even grandchildren or two. Yeah. What would you like to say to a, a 51-year-old Mr. Baloy or Dr. Yeah. Baloy yeah. or Professor Baloy? Yeah. <laughs> um, it, let's assume it's in the evening, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and the chairman and, 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 and Dr. O, oh, Mr. Baloy, the 52-year-old Baloy is in New York somewhere. Maybe, maybe let me ask this, the guys to zoom <laughs> in to you alone. So you speak yeah. to the camera, not me. Okay, you know? cool. I cool. don't even want to be on camera. I just want him to be full screen and speak to himself. Yeah. Um, evening, Chairman Baloi. I just want to say to you that I'm very um, proud of you. I'm proud of what you have achieved, what you have done for your continent. And I just want to say thank you for listening to your heart. Thank you for listening to your inner core. Even when times were unfavorable, and even when times were favorable, you still listened to the inner core and still stood by your values, irrespective of who thinks what. So I'm proud of you and thank you for being um, of saves.
to the people and everything else that you've done, you know, um, for your people, for your community. Most importantly, thank you for being you and being authentic to your call. Um, I'm proud of you, bruh. I'm proud of you, uh, Mr. Chairman. And how would you like to say to the kids that are around you there? Um, and the grandkid or uh, two, maybe. Yeah, even. I'm like, <laughs> hey, uh, kids, um, uh, be wise, be woke, um, and use all of this, you know, wisely and to follow the same ethos, just follow the same ethos of being of service, you know, to your own communities, to your own people as well, and being of purpose, you know, in everything else that you do. Never allow the social currency and anything else that is happening outside you, you know, control the inner you. Always be authentic to who you are. Hi, everyone. My name is Theo Baloyi. I'm the fan of Africa's premium sneaker brand, Bar 2, and I've just been hustled by DJ's boo on the Hustlers Corner.